Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie with Pocket of Preschool and I am coming to you tonight because it is back to school time and everybody is asking um, me tons and tons of questions about this thing back here, which is a linear calendar. So what I want you to do is pop in the comments for me. I want you to tell me what kind of calendar you use in your classroom and tell me what kind of classroom you have too. So tell me if you teach preschool, pre-K, TK, multi-age, kinder, um, and tell me what kind of calendar you use. Do you use a linear calendar? Do you use um, a traditional calendar? Do you use a wall calendar that you guys write on? Um, one of those, you know, giant desk calendars. I know some of you guys use that one too. Um, so kind of tell me in the comments and tell all of us what kind of calendar you use in your classroom and what kind of classroom you are. Regular ed, special ed, half day, full day, all of those, um, all those things. Um, so yeah. And then in the top of this post, I want to tell you real quick, there are some links for you guys. So there is a link to a blog post I did all about the linear calendar. It really breaks down the steps on how to make it if you want to make one for your classroom. Um, so yeah. And then there's links too to, and I'm, I'm kind of like backwards for me, so sorry if I'm a little awkward tonight. Um, there are links to um, my TPT store, so if you want to grab all these calendar icons or the calendar numbers or any of that, that is there. Um, and then there's links to other things too, like the Facebook group and things like that at the top of this post. Behind me is a linear calendar, and what a linear calendar is, it's basically a calendar glued in one long strip. So it's basically like a giant number line in your classroom. Um, so, and I, I also wanna say this too, so if you don't do a linear calendar classroom and you wanna do a traditional classroom, just take um, take bits and pieces of what you think will work for your classroom um, in this Facebook Live and toss the rest because everything won't work in every classroom and you may agree or disagree on different things that I do. So just take what you love about this and do that and leave the rest behind. <laughs> It's fine. Everybody's different, and I, I know calendar is like a hot topic in um, early childhood. And I do actually use a linear calendar or a traditional calendar um, the last couple months of school, and I will tell you about how I transitioned that to at the end. Um, so yeah, so like I said, this is my linear calendar. It's just basically an entire calendar, one long line. Let me see if I can, so you can kind of see. It takes up a lot of wall space. So I go, it goes from one all the way to 31. Now, if I, one of the questions I get a lot, if there is not 31, I just don't have that on there, and then I won't have that icon there, and I don't, like, redo the calendar or anything. Um, so, yeah. So, um, basically, the purpose of a linear calendar is, is because little learners, especially three, four, and five-year-olds, they do not and even some kindergartners, um, they do not have a concept of time, um, especially preschool, pre-K, TK. They do not have that concept of time yet. So what, what we do with that traditional calendar, especially with that sweep, it's really, really hard and challenging for kiddos to understand because it's honestly above their head. It's above where they're learning, where they can learn. It's just above where, above their level um, and what they can actually understand at that time. So this linear calendar is great because you're basically just saying like, this happened in the past and this is what is going to happen. So it's kind of just a big timeline of what has happened and what will happen. And what I love about a linear calendar too is it's quick. Like you guys, it takes me like five, seven minutes at the most every day. So I do not spend 20 minutes on the calendar like um, like we used to do like, a, like you know, decades ago. Um, so yeah, it takes me five minutes. That way it's meaningful for kiddos. Um, and it's purposeful. And I know I say like lead with intention. Like you want to, like we do not have that much time with our kiddos, especially if you teach half day. Even if you teach full day, I feel like there's never enough time in a school day to squeeze everything in. So I, I challenge you this year to be intentional with your teaching and to just, um, just to make most of every minute and get rid of the stuff that you know isn't working and keep the stuff that is working and then add in um, some funny things because then you're gonna have more time, right? So what you will not see on my calendar is anything with a pattern. So we do not do um, anything with patterns during calendar time um, because that is not, um, that's not my goal for calendar. My goal for calendar is one, to tell them what is happening that day. 
Um, so it helps us with the routine. It helps them get ready, prepared for their day. Um, like if we're having a dance party, they know that's coming. So that way they know and they can get ready for that change in the day. Maybe there's an, a fire drill, maybe there's an assembly, maybe you're having a party, but that way you're talking about what is gonna happen that day. That's what is important to them. What is happening that day that they need to know about? Because after we do calendar, we then go over our visual schedule, um, our visual routine, which I'll, let me switch that over for you. You can kind of see it, see right there? Um, in the black packet chart. And I'm gonna tell you really quick how I do my linear calendar. So what, what happens is, is I have a calendar helper and that calendar helper comes up to the board. There's a pointer, which I don't have one right now because my classroom is not ready yet. <laughs> um, so let's pretend this is a pointer and they will point to what day it is and they can either say the number or if they don't know the number, I'll say today is 14 and they just repeat it back. Today is 14. And I do just say the number. I don't say the ordinal number like Today is, the, um, today is August 14th, because 14th and 14 to a three-year-old and a four-year-old, those sound like two different numbers. 14 and 14th, those sound like two different numbers. So I just say the number. So I would say today is August 14, and the calendar helper can say that, or just point, depending on their personality. If they're shy, they don't have to say it. They can just point. And then I say, is anything happening today? And they'll they'll look in the underneath and they'll say, yes, something is happening or like on number 14, nothing is happening. So we call that a normal day. So they'll be like, nothing's happening today. Today is a normal day. And that, so we, my calendar helper points to the number and then we say the number, talk about what is happening and then they put an X on it and they put the X on it. And some of my three-year-olds, I do have to do hand over hand with them and my calendar is not look perfect you can see and i'll tell you about how um we put it up in just a second um uh, but you can see like my x's nothing on here is perfect because i want my kiddos to do it um because it's their calendar and it's their day it's their classroom like it's not it's not well it is my classroom too but i want them to be doing it so they can put the x on it if i need to do hand over hand to help them with that x it's fine um we can do that or if it's not an X and it's, you know, cause little kids, they do that, they don't really cross the midline yet. So that's okay too. As long as that number is marked off, we are good to go. The calendar pointers points to the number. We say today is August 14th. We talk about what is happening. Um, and then if they say like this, I, and I don't really have a birthday up here, but I put it on for an example, they'll say, oh, cause birthdays are very exciting, right? And, and holidays too. And I put all of the things up on my calendar as I can, because those create meaningful reasons to count. Um, so they'll be like, oh, it's um, Susie's birthday. And I will write on here on the calendar, um, on the birthday so they know who it is. So I would just write, it's Sue's birthday or Susie, <laughs> whoever it is. Um, and they can say, well, how, if, if today is four, you know, August 14th, how many more days until Susie's birthday? And they'll go, one, and they'll be like, well, let's say they, there's a fire drill all the way down here. Let's say one of my kiddos calls out and be like, oh my gosh, we have a fire drill coming up. How many more days? And as soon as you start modeling how many more days, they will get excited to count to the next thing that's coming up, or maybe how many more days until the dance party. And either the calendar helper can do it or you can do it. And you can go, let's figure out how many more days until our dance party. And you can go, one, two. There's two more days until our dance party. <gasps> oh, that's, is that a short amount of time or is that a long amount of time? So it also helps them ha start to develop those concepts of time where it's, did that just happen? Is it close? Or is that a long time away? So they can say, oh, look, the fire drill, it's all the way down here at the end. That's a longer time away. Whereas our, our, um, our dance party is coming up soon. So they're not really understanding yet today, tomorrow, and yesterday. Um, in kinder, they're just starting to. Um, but we talk about, is it coming up soon or is it far away? So hopefully that helps you guys out with that. We'll say today is August 14th. And then after we talk about what is happening that day and maybe we'll count up to something um then we count that many count up to that number and it's just a sneaky way for me to sneak in a rote counting 
um, because Rowe County is really boring. <laughs> and if we do it during calendar, then it's a guaranteed one time during the day that we get some Rowe County in. Um, and we add movement to it. So we might clap, clap until 14. We may um, stomp until 14. And I usually let the calendar helper pick that. So I'll say, do you want to clap or stomp today? And when I say stomp, they don't jump. They just, um, on the carpet, they just stomp with their feet. So we would count up to 14, like one, two, three, four, all the way up to 14. And then we go, woo! And we all raise our hands in the air and shout hooray or woo or something like that because we want them to stop. Because if you know little learners, they just keep going. Um, so we want them to stop at 14. So we'll say 13, 14, woo! And that's kind of their stopping point for the day. Um, so yeah, so again, that's really quick, guys. That tastes like five minutes. But if you, I want you right now to think about your calendar time. Do you have behavior problems? Are you constantly cueing kids to listen? Um, is it not fun? <laughs> because my calendar time, I love it. The kids love it. I have everyone engaged for the most part. I mean, you're always going to have one kiddo randomly not listening or something like that because they're little. Like, it happens. Um, or, you know, they may be tired or some, you know, something else is going on. But for the most part, I have almost every kiddo engaged every single day in calendar time. And why is that? Because it makes it about them. Like, what is happening in their day? What is happening, to, you know, in the next couple days in their classroom? What's important to them? Um, Susie's birthday is important to them because she'll probably bring treats, right? Um, so we keep it very much about their world. Um, <clears throat> And then I know some people always ask about home days. So I put home days on the calendar. I know some people put school days and home days. But I, for me personally, and you can totally have school days and home days um, on your calendar. But I, for, for me, I think it, it makes it a lot to look at if I add, if this whole row was full. And then I would have like a third row. But it's, again, totally up to you. If you want to have school days in this spot and then... You can actually put another white strip underneath and that way you can have an event strip because um, you can see sometimes um, I just put my event underneath it on this border and I'll tell you why I have a border there in just a minute. Um, so yeah, so I just put the home days on there um, just so it doesn't look cluttered and it's not overwhelming to look at for a little guy um, because we all know that when something is visually overwhelming, you lose them. So I try and make it not visually overwhelming. And then another thing people always ask was, so what if you teach full day? And like I taught full day and all my kiddos did not come on the same days. I had kids come, they could actually pick their schedule, which was super fun when planning as the teacher, but it worked for the families and that's what's important, right? Um, so they could, my, maybe they came Monday, Thursday. Maybe they came Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Maybe they came every day. I would only put the home days on there and I would say, these are the days that everyone is at home. Sometimes, you know, on the days where we have school, some of our friends come some days and some don't. But the days that are home days, everyone is at home. So basically you're putting weekends and, um, <coughs> you're putting weekends and those, you know, when you're not in session. Um, any, you know, those non-school days. Um, so yeah, because I, there was no way when I had, 24 kids on my roster and 22 different schedules, there's no way I could manage that. And we needed to know what days we didn't have school, so I would just put the home days on the days everyone didn't have. Everyone was at home. So yeah, so hopefully that helps. Um, so now on to kind of, if you guys have questions too, make sure you guys are popping those in as you answer. So I know I talked about events. So I put up as many events as I possibly can. Like every Friday in my classroom during music and movement time, we have Friday dance party. We do go noodle. I bring out like air guitar or blow up guitars. Um, we do musical instruments. Some of the bigger fun things for um, music and movement time rather than just singing songs. Um, so we call those Dance Party Fridays, and I can totally do a Facebook Live about Dance Party Fridays if you guys would like that. I did one like forever ago, but I can do another one. Um, so like that we put on the calendar. If you have Spanish every Wednesday, if you have yoga um, twice a month, if you have um, a party, if you have birthdays, if you have 
anything. <laughs> if you have screenings, if you have fire drills, um, basically anything that's happening, put it on your calendar because it makes it, it gives you another meaningful reason to count. And also it tells you and the kiddos what is happening in your day. So that way when, you know, you have the policeman coming today to talk to your classroom or the fireman, they're not like surprised and freaking out because something is happening that they did not know was coming and they could not prepare for it. Um, because I don't like it when random people pop up in my life. Um, so we let they, kiddos just like us, they like to know what is happening before it happens. So if you have the, a firefighter coming to visit, put that on there. If you have, I don't know, anything, put it on there. Here, let me, um, so this is how I organize all of my events. And I have these event cards in my TPT store. And there's something crazy like 300 events. Like, it's bananas how many I have. Um, so, yeah. So, and I, I based them all off your feedback. So, if you guys um, have a whole bunch that you guys don't see in there, let me know and I can add them. So, I keep all of my calendar goodies in this little um, manila folder. Um, or, I guess it's like a, not manila. I guess it's like a plastic accordion style. You can tell it's old because the rubber band doesn't even like work anymore and the um, month headers I just kind of stuck in the front um, and then inside and this is like very fancy look I just wrote it so I have um, my little mini ones which I'll tell you what those are for in just a second and then I have like home birthday school and events and look at all the different events I have like there's like tons like I have and if you would do any of these things, you can totally put these on there. Orchard field trip, hayride, a magician visits. Maybe you do an apple tasting or a, pump, a popcorn tasting, which, oh, that one's right here next to it. Um, maybe you make gingerbread houses. Maybe your um, classroom is big on baseball opening day. We are really big on that here in St. Louis. Um, maybe you have art. Maybe um, you're having a Western day. Like those um, fun days, like those spirit days, those are in here too. Hat day. Um, maybe you're doing a nature walk, so you can call it like a nature day. Here is the Spanish little icon. Um, screening, car wash, maybe you do, uh, maybe you have like a food truck come, or the ice cream truck come, or you have water day, or you go to the library, um, jump for heart, maybe you do cooking, maybe camping. I have gymnastics, I have color day, so maybe if you do like those color days, when you're, um, if you have little guys and you're learning colors, you have a blue day or something. Um, so yeah, so um, Lisa said she couldn't find the plastic accordion file, so she just used a coupon organizer instead. So Lisa, that is an awesome idea. Thanks for letting us know that. So again, I have like 200 or something um, calendar icon cards, and if you don't like this rainbow, if you think that's really overwhelming, that would be overwhelming for your kiddos, I do have a, um, a simple design um, of all my calendar, um, the icons and the months and the days, um, and it just has a black border, so that way it wouldn't be as visually um, overwhelming um, just to have it all with a black border. That way it's not so much color. Um, and then, let me put that back real quick. And then if you're wondering how I um, made, actually made the calendar, what I did, was I, um, I just took three. I took three of those big white calendars you get at the teacher store and I cut them up so I had two strips and then I taped them together. Like you can see right here is where one of the seams are because the marker catches a little bit. So yeah, so I just took them, cut them apart. Oh, sorry. I laminated the calendars and then I cut them apart so they're in two strips and then I taped them together. And then all of the calendar icons um, are attached with Velcro. And then the reason why there's a border on here is, and I learned this the hard way, friends. Um, I ruined a wall in my classroom one year. Um, so since I have the kiddos mark X's, they go above and under the number, which is totally fine, not a big deal. But I have this border here just to catch all those marks because the one year I didn't do that, the year I started um, having them put the X on it, oh yeah, I had like this black, once I took my linear calendar around, I ha had this like black 
like oval, like because I tried magic erasers, I couldn't do get get it off the wall in any way. Um, so they actually had to come in and paint my wall. <laughs> felt really bad um, but I learned my lesson so now I just have a border up here if you think that is visually overwhelming for your kiddos do a plain color or just do like a white um, a white border around it um, this is just what I have in the other places in my classroom so I just kind of did it to match but again this is nothing fancy this is just to catch their black marks so I don't ruin the wall and you don't have to have your walls repainted Oh, and the, it's attached to the calendar. I just stapled it into the wall. That's it. It's nothing fancy. I just stapled it into the wall. And then my month is just attached with tape. But I really should just put a piece of Velcro under here, and that would make more sense. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, this is just attached with tape. And then these I just attach with scotch tape. Um, so, yeah. So, so at the end of the month, so either the last day or the first day, um, the kiddos help me change out the calendar. When I taught full day, we did it in the morning because I had about an hour and a half when kiddos strike, um, got to come in anytime. So we, we did it during that hour and a half morning um, open center time. Um, but now that I teach half day, um, our day is a little bit more restricted. So we change it out during center time and it's an option. They do not have to do it. Um, what we do is um everybody gets a tissue and they help me erase the numbers on here i do that for a while at the beginning of the year now um or if you want and this is what i do probably starting around october they literally we pull off all the numbers and we put them on the floor and they erase them on the floor and um then they help me put them back up in order and then so, which is actually a great, a math, a math, like a mini, a math mini lesson, right? Because um, that way they're identifying the numbers, they're putting them up in order, and I am now getting buy-in from them because they're helping create their classroom calendar. Because what's not better than them putting it up themselves? Because it makes it meaningful, again, it makes it meaningful for them because they put it up, they did it, it's their calendar, it is not my calendar. Um, I, I will tell you, I have kiddos that, because I have parents who come in and do drop off when I talk, when I do half day and when I talk full day. They will, if when they get excited about a new month, when the new month goes up, they will bring their parents over to the calendar and be like, oh my gosh, mom or dad or aunt or grandma, whoever's picking up, oh my gosh, look, my birthday's up here or or my best friend Susie's birthday up here or oh my gosh look we have I don't know maybe donuts with dad or whatever it is or um you know like hat day or something they'll be like oh my gosh look we have a hat day this month and I'm so excited look it's a, it's at the end of the month or you know maybe it's at the beginning of the month it's coming up soon but the fact that they are that excited about the calendar tells me that like it's meaningful to them and now they're bringing their parents over. They're talking about what's going on and what's happening. And they're talking about what day of the week it is. Because usually the mom or dad or, or the kiddo will be like, oh, it's on it's on August 14th or August 14th, depending on if it's mom or dad saying it. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So, that, that just makes my heart happy when I see a kiddo excited about something in our classroom. And that they are so excited that they are bringing their mom and dad or grandma and grandpa over and showing them the, that that makes my heart happy because I know then that this is their classroom, it's their community, and it's meaningful for them, and it's actually like important to them. Um, so yeah. Okay. So okay, talked about how to make it. We talked about kind of what we do. Um, so at the end of the year. Um, like, cause I have a multi-age classroom, so I have half day, we cook, we have school Monday, Wednesday, Friday, which is why I have a lot of home days up here. And, um, I, I have a, mi a mixture of three, four, and five year olds. So some of my kiddos go to kindergarten next week or the ne next week, the next year. So what I do is those last two months of the year, I actually have out a linear calendar. Here, let me move this up. And I have a traditional calendar out. I don't get rid of the linear calendar, but I have this one out too because I call I actually call it the kindergarten calendar. 
Um, so I'll say, oh my gosh, look, my kindergarten, my friend is a kindergarten teacher and she sent us the kindergarten calendar, you guys. This is what you're gonna have in your classroom next year. And that gets them super excited about the calendar and they're like, oh my gosh, like I can't wait. Like, oh my gosh, and we talk about how it's the same, how it's different. Um, and then I have, okay, this is May, so it, normally it matches, but this is, my linear calendar is set up for August, and this one I just have left over from the end of the year. I didn't take it down so I could show you guys. Um, <clears throat> so I have the days of the week at the top, I have the numbers in, and then I have the icons in. That way the icons will match up here, and all I do is I print the calendar icons for to a page. That's what all of these little itty bitties are in the front. Um, and it does cover up the number a little bit, but I mean, you could always print them smaller, but it's not, not that big of a deal for me anyway. So you decide what you want to do. But that way we have the traditional calendar and the linear calendar so they can kind of see how they're the same. And I do not want my kindergartner friends going into kindergarten going, oh my gosh, what is this? <laughs> that is not the calendar I used in preschool. Like that isn't my calendar. So I transitioned them um, those last two months of school. And I used to, I just had these like transparencies that I had X's on. These are like literally like 10 years old. Um, but now I bought this calendar pocket chart and it's got a half thing on it. So we just, I just let the kiddos put an X on the actual calendar and then it erases. So it's fine. And if you ever can't get the X's off, just use a um, magic eraser. So yeah. And then I usually just keep it like right down here at the end of my board so that way I still have a little bit of board. Sometimes I will move it underneath depending on what we're doing or my classroom or the kiddos. Okay. So, oh, I, don't, I think I stopped <laughs> in the middle. But, um, so, when I have the kiddos help me put it up, one thing I do is um, I only put out 10 numbers at a time. So let's say we have all of these numbers off and they're on the ground. I'll just put out numbers one to 10 and I'll say, okay, you know, Susie, fine, number two, number two is next. Okay, what number's after two? Three, fine, number three. And once they get the one through 10 up, then I give them number, all the teen numbers and then we do all the, all the, um, all the 20s. Um, that way it's not overwhelming and they're not looking at 31 numbers trying to find um, a number. And they actually help me put these up too. That's why they're not super sticky anymore. We just take all these off and I actually literally, they, we just put them, oh, you can't see it, sorry. We literally just put them all, I have them peel these off and we put them all on the whiteboard. And then I can say, okay, you know, put, okay, we, and I'll just get out my calendar and I'll say, you know, oh, Susie, can you put the home day on number 27? It's a two and a seven and it's blue and it's at the end. Um, so that way they have a lot of, I can give them a lot of cues um, and clues when finding that number. So I'll say, oh, it's a 27, it's at the end and it's blue. So they can go 20 and maybe they don't, they don't know which one it is, but they'll, they'll know it's blue and they can put it on underneath. And if they put them on crooked, you guys, I do not go back and change them. I do not because again like nothing has to be perfect and like if my calendar cards are not all perfect that's okay if, if I have a kiddo who wants to come up and fix them they totally can um, but I do not fix them however they put them up obviously if they put them up upside down or something um, it's just a teachable moment and go oh look the words go at the top or oh look do you notice those letters are upside down or sideways or something like that um, Somebody's asking about days of the week. So the kiddos help me put it up every month. And again, we just do it the last day or the first day. And it's really, honestly, it's whenever it fits in the schedule. If we have a crazy last day of the month, um, we will do it the first day we come back that next week or whatever. Um, oh, and the other question I'm sure you guys are wondering is, is when do I do calendar? So I think this is kind of... Um, since it's back to school and we're redoing our schedules and things, I do not do my calendar at the beginning of circle because my circle time is for message of the day and book um, or, you know, a read aloud. And I want them to, I don't want to lose them during the book because we did calendar. So I have music and movement as the first thing we do together as a classroom. Um, so we do calendar actually at the beginning of music and movement. That way, um, Again, five to seven minutes tops. 
Um, so they're listening for five to seven minutes for calendar, and then they are moving for music and movement. So that way they're not having to sit for five to seven minutes for calendar and then do message of the day and then do a read aloud because they are not going to be able to attend for that read aloud, especially if back to school in those first, you know, three, four months of school, I'm going to lose them. Um, so yeah. Um, Jennifer says, do I start with the calendar done at the beginning of school? So yes, so for August, I will have the calendar already up um, and it will be done for them and then we'll do um, September together. Um, I know some of you guys are asking about days of the week and I do not do days of the week. I don't sing the song, none of it because again, they don't understand time and it's not really meaningful for them and it's not really appropriate just um, developmentally. But if you teach kinder, um, I do have a yesterday, today is, and tomorrow will be with the calendar icons or the days of the week. And I just have them on Velcro so you can easy swap them out. If, and I have the abbreviation and the long word on there too. Again, just with Velcro dots. So if you want to do that um, if, or if you're required to do that, I know everybody is so very different um, when it comes to what we're required to do, what we want to do. Um, and what's developmentally appropriate? It's all three different things, right? Um, well, hopefully it's hopefully it's developmentally appropriate, right? Um, but sometimes we're required to do things that we don't want to do, or maybe we want to do things for you know different reasons. And you know what? That's okay. We don't all have to teach the same. I think that's the one amazing thing about teaching is we just teach um, how we feel. Obviously, we want it to be developmentally appropriate and meaningful and intentional, but. We all, you know, have our own teaching style and we can tweak it a little bit here and there. So yeah, so this is included in the calendar pack if you guys need that. But I do not do days of the week at all. We, and I will, if, um, I will talk about it sometimes like, oh, today is August 14. Um, oh, today's Wednesday, you know, or today's Friday. Every Friday we do Dance Party Friday, you know, something like that. But I don't do it um, like during calendar is like a, piece that we have to do every week. Um, somebody's asking about weather. Um, I don't do weather during calendar, just because, I, again, I want it to be short and sweet. We talk about the weather before we go outside. Um, so I'll be like, oh, today it's kind of chilly and cloudy. We need our coats. Um, so I do, we, and I don't have like a weather chart or anything like that, um, but we talk about the weather before we go outside and then we go look at it. Um, so yeah. But I know some of you guys like to do weather during um, during calendar, and that's okay too. For so our procedure for calendar again, I do it at beginning at the music, beginning of music and movement time. It's quick. It is five to seven minutes. Um, what we do, my calendar helper comes up. He points to what day of what day it is, and I or he or she says today is August sixteenth. And I say the number, not the ordinal number. Today is August 16th, and we talk about what is happening. So I'll be like, what's happening today? And he could be like, it's Dance Party Friday. Um, and I'll be like, oh, is there anything exciting coming up? And he can say yes or no, or oh, we have two home days next. And then we, I'll ask him, do you want to clap or stomp to 16? And we wrote count to 16, either clapping or stomping. And we go 15, 16, woo! And we do our woo at the end so they know that that is the stopping point. And then after we do the calendar, then we review our visual schedule and then we do music and movement. So it's really, really, really quick to do. But Dance Party Friday, it's really just a time when we bust out some really fun stuff. Because Fridays, especially at the beginning of the school year, they're tired <laughs> because it's a long day. Um, so we do musical instruments. We might do like beanbag games. We might do, um, I have like, the, you know, those ribbons. Um, we might do ribbons. We might bring out some pom-poms. We might do um, Go Noodle. We do a lot of Go Noodle on Dance Party Fridays. To do in our visual schedule, it's literally on the other side of my calendar. So it's right there. And it's in a black pocket chart. And that, is, again, is in my rainbow decor pack. Or um, it's in a simple black border as well. So yeah, so I hope you guys, oh, somebody's asking about the pictures above the linear calendar. So these are my alphabet 
Let me see if I can tilt it up a bit. So that is my, oh, sorry, it covered the camera. So those are my alphabet. Um, we actually, I pull them down all the time and I actually have a magnet on the back so I can stick them, you can't see it. So I'll stick them to my board if we're talking about a letter, if we're making a letter or something. Um, and I just have them attached on a ribbon with clothespins. Oh, sorry, covered up the camera again. Um, so yes, yeah, so that way I can pull them down or the kids can grab them. So that way it's a little bit more um, interactive and just having it up um, high. Oh, the other thing about a linear calendar, you wanna make sure it is eye level with your kiddos. If you don't have this much room to do a linear calendar, you can div always divide it in half and have two. Um, or, or I know some teachers do just the week, um, the one week they're doing, like whatever week it is, they just have a linear calendar and it's just that seven days, just that week that they're in. And then they change it every week. Alrighty. So you guys have a fabulous night. Again, at the top of this post, there are links to my TBT store so you can grab the calendar icons, which are, y'all, like these are amazing. Like I've been adding to them for years and years and years and I they make calendar time so meaningful for your little guys when they have meaningful things to count to. Um, and then also at the top, if you want like step-by-step -step directions on how to make the linear calendar or you want to just read what I have been saying, um, the blog post is at the top of this post and the Facebook group and all the things. So all the links are at the top. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.